take a moment to talk about this. And and Ellis had touched on this a little bit, and you know we've we've kind of walked through this in terms of hey, my name's Steve Grumbine. I'm a surfer. My name's Steve Grumbine. I'm a guitar player. My name's Steve Grumbine. I'm an activist. Whatever. My name's Steve Grumbine. I'm a stay-at-home dad. There are ways of redefining what work is. This is not the same thing as as a um, you know, hey, you're going to work for the man. This isn't just fun, funding capitalism. This is a means of taking away uh, the capitalist ability to uh, punish the workers, basically. This is preventing them from having the ability to, to basically use starvation and, and the, the basic necessities of life against them. Is it yeah. not? Or yeah, well, absolutely. Unemployment is used as a threat. Like we want to, we want to remove uh, joblessness as a threat um, to people, right? You, you don't want um, the private sector to so-called discipline workers because they can threat them with an employ, you know, they can use the threat of unemployment. Um, and in fact, because we tolerate a lot of unemployment, we tolerate uh, what is it now? It is um, about you know seven million people officially unemployed, but really it's closer to seventeen people who are looking for full-time work. So they are ready to compete for your job. So that threat of unemployment is removed because you know that you have another alternative. You have another living wage job standing on the ready. And so the employer can't quite you know, threaten you uh, with, with unemployment, certainly not at the low end, you know, where you know, people are getting sort of the lowest wages, uh, the poverty wages that private sector and the private sector works. So, uh, pays. So if you're working in a pri in a poverty wage private sector work and you've got a living wage public sector work, guess what? Uh, the private sector will have to do something to keep that worker. They have to pay more, better. So, right. um, so it really establishes the labor standard. What we believe is the minimum decent job um, that is decent labor conditions, decent wages, decent benefits, um, uh, and um, whether you know that's vacation package with retirement package, whether it is paid leave, etc., it is the labor standard. Now you mentioned the, the basic uh, income guarantee, and I am happy to talk more about the comparisons. I, I've been a friend of the basic income guarantee since 2000 when I first started talking to the academics. And only recently, in the popular press, basic income has become so popular. Uh, but you know, we've got the same goals. We've got the same objectives. We want to get rid of. Uh, the precarious nature of the labor market, right? We want to make sure that people don't live in poverty. So, so, so we have same objectives, but we have different views of how we get there. You see, um, and there are many different versions of the basic income guarantee. So I want to be careful which one I'm talking about. I am fully on board with a universal child allowance. We should do it today. We should have done it yesterday. Um, a paid family leave. Uh, various other income supports expand, strengthen social security, uh, uh, disability benefits, etc. But there is this one proposal that is universal, right? Unconditional, provided to all at living level. In other words, you know, twenty thousand dollar grant and to anyone, rich or poor, irrespective of whether they um, work or not. Um, let's call it ten thousand dollar grant, right? Um, the, my philosophic, there's, there are a number of problems that I have, but one is a philosophical uh, objection here that the basic income is motivated by the right, the right uh, sort of, um, arguments, but it only provides access to the system as is structured, right? You get an income, you get a check, and then you have to go and buy the childcare, the education, the healthcare, all these other things that you need. So it is not in and of itself, a check is not transformative of the system that creates the inequities that we want to correct, right? We want to transform to make the system, the, the economic system more just. We want to provide decent wages. We want to provide healthcare. We want to provide childcare, environmental care, the basic income in and of itself is not an institution, it's a payment. And so there is this, this idea that, you know, we're gonna get our checks and we will be able finally to participate in the labor market and get affordable care. 
Well, I can tell you, you know, you know, I, I get an income and I have difficulty getting affordable childcare. So childcare is already missing for people who have incomes. What suggests that childcare will be there, affordable childcare will be there if, uh, uh, you know, if we provide the basic income grant? The problem is the economy. The economy doesn't provide the things we need. It's not just the simple absence of income. So what the job guarantee does, it kind of matches the problem with the solution. And we say, okay, yeah, uh, these communities don't have enough uh, childcare. We will provide it through the job guarantee and we will allow people to participate in the provisioning. So you can think of it as participation income. Uh, it allows, and it kind of empowers people to participate in their community in a very structured way, right? You, you, you lack adequate, decent food. Here's a community garden. We will organize it. We've seen it. Um, come and participate in the production of uh, uh, an organic farm, etc. Um, you lack after-school activities for your kid in your particular community. Here's the local library is going to organize them. Um, not to mention the enormous other things that you know, the problems that we are facing of you know environmental problems. Um, Can I so, interrupt just for a moment? Absolutely. This is so beautiful to me. So what I want to make sure of for our, and I'm going to take you out of the picture just for a minute saying this is me, not you saying this. What I want you guys to understand is this. We're talking about serving America. We're talking about serving our local communities. We're talking about serving one another and making our lives better. We're not talking about serving the man, so to speak. Okay. This is not a, an, uh, a replacement for capitalism and uh, you know, trying to augment. Cap this is something totally different. This is about our lives. This is about improving our lot in life. So I want to make sure we, we understand this is not Calvinism. This is not one of these things that you, you get wrapped up in. Okay. This right here is a new way of viewing participation in our society. Anyway, with that, I want to bring Pavlina back. Well, I'm sorry about that. Thank you. No, that's a really good point. It's, we just have to start thinking in broader terms about what work is. You know, work is not going, you know, just to the office and getting a job. And, and for many people, you know, that's a good thing. And many people want that. So I see no reason why I should, I should tell people what they should want. You know, I, I find this a little bit you know, a little bit in the basic income uh, crowd that they say, look, you know, the basic income is liberating. You don't have to go to your miserable job. Well, you know, a lot of people are craving jobs and it's not my business to tell them whether they should, they should or not work. My, my job is to actually create the opportunities that they desire. So how about we create decent work? So, it, you know, it's not our job to put people into miserable jobs in the private what work is to put a decent labor standard and through a program that is not tied to private profit but is tied to the public good so we really expand the definition of what's useful work uh, we provide these other opportunities that the private sector is just not in the business of providing jobs for all we just it's you know it's a it's a very basic fact of life and that is the function of the public sector to guarantee that basic human right uh, in a humane way. So we can, we can again, think of very, um, uh, you know, very interesting models of providing work in the community, per, you know, to enhance participation, um, involvement, to transform the communities and even the production process itself. You know, perhaps food doesn't have to be provided for profit, sustainable agriculture, right? Not necessarily strictly for profit. So that kind of job guarantee is, uh, allows the possibilities for people to participate in their communities and transform their lives. So I, I wanted to say this, I, I have come to believe that, you know, I started off thinking, wow, we can go ahead and provide people with the basic income. And you basically helped me understand, well, many people have, but just now, I think you said it very succinctly. Bottom line is, is that you can give us money, but but childcare is still unaffordable. Um, you can give us money, but these different aspects of life are still unaffordable. And I've read, a, I'm giving the Minskys a lot of credit here. I want to make sure they hear this. They wrote a great article the other day. Uh, somebody was commenting about not so much a basic income guarantee, so much as a basic needs guarantee. 
And, and the way they wrote it out there was so powerful and it addressed exactly what you're saying. Instead of just a basic income, I'm going to provide you these things that the capitalists of the world can raise the rates up to match your bid and screw you up to begin with. And, you know, and, and actually provide you with the necessities so that life is not an unnecessary struggle. So you can self actualize. I mean, to me, that was, I just fell in love with it. That just sent me into a, yeah, a wonderful I, place. Yeah. I, I think I, I had tweeted something saying, you know, the basic income guarantee makes perfect sense if the grant is not cash, but in terms of real goods and services. And, you know, what are you going to do with the enormous costs of healthcare if you get $10,000 a year guaranteed, no questions asked? You know, it, you can't do anything with, with the basic income grant. And, and the thing is, this is, this is the problem that um, there, you know, there's support on the right and the left um, uh, for, for this program. But the very strong support on the right is to replace a lot of the welfare programs, to replace the wealth, the welfare the, the safety net essentially with the basic income grant. And I, I have to say that some people on the left have conceded, yeah, well, the basic income could be more efficient. And I completely disagree. Like the, the way you solve a problem is you solve it directly. Your problem is expensive healthcare. You provide affordable healthcare. You don't provide cash. You provide affordable healthcare. If that means controlling drug prices. If that means busting the monopolies, if that means providing a public option, that's what you do. If the problem is inadequate health, uh, child care, you provide it. You don't provide a grant so that people can buy it on the market. You directly provide what is necessary. It's like school and, vouchers. Yes, it's exactly. The same exact problem. And that's what, I'm sorry, I, <laughs> that's what kills me is the very people that would fight against school vouchers are many of the same people fighting for a basic income guarantee and don't realize that once again, the wealthy will still go to the best schools ever They'll have a, but they'll have a check in their hand to help offset that while the poor will still be segregated in these bad schools because they can't afford to get there. I mean, yeah, yeah. anyway. Yeah, no, can I just say something more about the yeah. safety? I mean, really, it's with these public policies, you create policy space and constituencies. You, basically, you create support for these programs. If I give you a basic income grant, I can always tell you, hey, why do you need uh you know, why, you know, why do you need these uh, food stamps if you have the basic income grant? You know, you're done. Um, I, I can't take away funding for public education if the job guarantee provides after school activities or teacher assistance in the school. But if I give you a basic income grant, you know, somebody can tell you, look, you don't need the public school system. Go and buy it in the market. So if, if the basic, um, if the job guarantee um, is providing, um, yeah, it is, is providing uh, child care. Uh, you can't take away Head Start program funds. Do you see, if, if, you, ma if you marry the job guarantee, the jobs are uh, in these public uh, spaces and tied to other public policies. If, if some of the job um, guarantee people are doing some basic, um, basic work for the EPA, you just can't defund the EPA right? The Environmental Protection Agency. Or if, if there are some very basic food inspector functions that the job guarantee could, could, um, could fulfill, you, you don't defund the Food and Drug Administration. So what I'm saying is that it is really an institution that can supplement uh, all of these other um, areas of government that have been sorely defunded. And you just can't take them away. And they have been fought for, you know, with blood and tears, if you will. So you don't want to replace the hard-fought welfare state with just a single grant.